we're doing a spark plug replacement on a 2010 Mercury Mountaineer with a V6 engine. So on the left bank, it's pretty straightforward accessing the spark plugs. But on the other side, it looks a little bit more convoluted. So we're going to start off by taking off the whole air box assembly, and that should give us an easier access path to the ignition wires and plugs. All right, let's take this off. This you push down, wiggle, that comes off. That's that eight millimeter socket. Here. Okay, we, we detach these clips on the air box. Now we should just wiggle this off. Yes, that's much better, much better. Let's see if we could just pull the ignition wires off the plugs without using any tools. I'll twist it a little bit and then yank. Oh, that one came off easy. I twist it so that the rubber adhesion breaks away from the spark plug ceramic. Oh, that one came out. This one's hard to see. <clears throat> all right, got them all off without incident. A lot of times, if you're not careful taking off the ignition wire spark plug connectors, they'll just break off. Man, this is in tight. Okay. It seems like the spark plug is rusted in place. Okay, that's one plug, another five more to go. Plugs are in pretty tight, so I want to use my extended ratchet wrench, so I have the leverage to take the torque off the plugs. Uh, a standard length 3 8 inch ratchet wrench, you're going to have a real hard time trying to get the plugs out. Alright, now that I got the tension off, I'll use the shorter ratchet wrench so I got more mo movement okay spark plug number five four more left There we go. All right, that was number three. Okay, so this is the original factory platinum plug. Now, it doesn't look worn out, but we're replacing it with this Autolite Iridium plug. If you notice, the ground strap is, is a finer tip, so you get a hotter spark. Now, you, you can notice that there's a little bit of corrosion buildup, which is why it was so difficult to pull the plug out. There's a lot of controversy as to whether you should apply anti-seize on the threads. So, I just put a very, very light coat of anti-seize on the threads. I don't gob it on, so if I have to pull the plug out again, it won't be so much of a hassle. It's to offset any corrosion that may build up. Now, they say that the plug manufacturers put a corrosion coating on, on the plugs so it's easier to get out. Well then if that's true then how come this plug has corrosion buildup on it? Anti-seize has metallics in there so if you put too much anti-seize it could cause a, a spark arc. It can actually short the ignition system. But those are people who gob the stuff on. I just put a very light coat. That's about it. And then when I thread it in the anti-seize will spread. Oh, by the way, I used a 16 millimeter socket. You don't have to use a spark plug uh, socket if you don't want to.
see with that little bit of anti-seize it's not hanging while I thread the spark plug in. foot-pounds. That's 20 foot-pounds. I like to coat the ceramic portion of the, of the spark plugs with a little bit of dielectric grease so that the spark plug uh, ignition boots slip on easier. Just take a little bit and coat the spark plug. Now I'll just connect the tube, spark plug tube. Okay, that's one, two. Okay, now we're going to the air box, hose, reconnect everything. And that's it for the right bank. Let's start it, see if there's any problem before I go on the left bank. So this side is going to be significantly easier to do. 